Good morning, folks. The sun gave us a sneak peek of activity for the next cycle. We've got a top choice selection of items today and our textbook is officially open for pre-order. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star looking like the last many until the end of the sequence, top right. There wasn't much in the way of umbral confined plasma to eject without large sunspots, but we got an excellent look at the flare eruptive CME process involving those large looping arcs above the surface. It is monitoring the sunspot magnetism that one can forecast the interactions and destabilizations of those fields. If the sunspot hadn't decayed and it actually engaged considerable plasma in its umbral fields, there would have been a tremendous CME instead of the tiny one we did get. Otherwise, space weather is quiet. Solar wind continues calming and, along with it, geomagnetic conditions. A quick note. We debunked the magnetic field event in science and data detail yesterday, but all you really need to debunk these recent stories of some major magnetic field event is the fact that you heard about it. The internet would be gone, electricity a memory, and we likely would be enduring the end of the world. Definitively no live streams or John Madden-like analysis hours later. Last night's video tells you exactly what did happen. Boom. No, that wasn't John Madden, that was Krakatoa. Shot plumes kilometers high, and while you can get the photos of her eruption and smoke anywhere online, this is the sulfur dioxide return from the Himawari satellite, and it is the coolest view taken of the event by far. Otherwise, the top lithospheric event was a large blot echo in the Philippines. Also, western U.S. a bit more active than usual once again. And speaking of the United States, we're getting an early alert about tomorrow. While there will be meteorologically relevant events throughout the evening tonight, the Easter Bunny skipped the eggs this year and is bringing hail, high winds, and tornado potential. With GFS models changing hourly, I highly recommend you take heed of your local forecasts in this area throughout today and tomorrow. Up first in the science news, something super cool. On the left, you see what you're used to seeing as the ocean floor on global maps, and on the right, where we are now using multi-band scans of the ocean floor. The paper is linked below, is free to read, and there's much more than just one square comparison from before and after. Lots of excellent maps on that link, also making me rethink the name of the Antarctic Ridge since it smiles up into the Indian and East Pacific Oceans. We've got the first step in a multi-study analysis of local magnetic fields, not local like your neighborhood or our planet, but those residing just outside the solar system. While this is going to take some imagination, this is about half the visible sky from just west of galactic center at zero degrees to a bit well east. Eventually, they hope to tease out the heliospheric nose effects and just map the fields of the galaxy, which is exceptionally useful because of the fact that modern astrophysics puts it as a rippling galactic current sheet, just like the sun's and any sphere magnets in an electric field. And when a star crosses it, there are two potential nova triggers coming in the wave. More on that in a moment. Up next, this is a good one. Obviously, the atmosphere has natural heating and cooling processes, especially the latter at nighttime, out of the sunshine. But we are now learning that the increased dust content blown around due to increased aridity caused a 40% drop in the cooling potential of the atmosphere in the second half of the 20th century, at least over Antarctica. This is a huge problem for those who want to blame CO2, as this is the first ever reconstruction of this dust radiative forcing for Antarctica. And by the way, you can't do those studies outside the poles because rain and wind wash and mix the samples that fall. And speaking of problems for climate science, they went ham on QBO inclusion in CMIP6 models, but they forgot to include the solar forcing of QBO in the math. They find that there has been little variation in the accuracy of the models, and folks, this reveals the key next next step after what's happening now. While solar particle forcing is getting into the game of climate science in a number of ways, not every correlation discovered is coming with it, and one of those seems to be its correlation forcing QBO. Luckily, the climate scientists of tomorrow get a fresh look at all of it in classrooms the world over this fall with a third edition of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. Our third textbook is available to pre-order at spaceweathernews.com publications. There is also a link to that below the video. Our third edition has gone from 200 pages to 300. The 200 paper citations in the second edition has become 500. The full bibliography and numerous other resources are available on that page. 
everything about space weather and solar cycles, everything the IPCC is letting into the game of climate science from a solar perspective, everything they are missing and will need to get going forward, the broader connections to technology, human health and earthquakes, and a brand new chapter 8 on extreme solar activity, super flares, the recurrent solar micronova triggered by the galactic sheet, and the proof in the other planets and nearby stars that it's already here now, beginning to engulf the solar system, a solar catastrophe cycle preparing to go again. There has never been a book like this. At full price, it's 30% the cost of comparable textbooks, it's discounted this month only, and you can actually understand the book because it's high-octane knowledge aimed at 10th grade reading level. The future of climate science, weather forecasting, and of the Earth as a whole is here. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.